Islam, the second biggest religion in the world with an estimated 1.8 billion followers worldwide. It is also the world's fastest growing religion. It is the most government endorsed faith as per the Pew Research Analysis of 199 countries. Out of 80 countries that favor a specific religion, 27 countries have officially declared Islam as a state religion. Seven Islamic countries are in the Asia-Pacific region, which includes Bangladesh, Brunei and Malaysia. In comparison, 13 countries, including nine European nations, designate Christianity as their state religion. More than a third of Muslims are concentrated in Africa and the Middle East, regions projected to have the biggest population rise. By 2060, three out of 10 people in the world are expected to be followers and believers of Islam. With this demographic comes multiple challenges. Business, culture and conflicts have had an overt or covert religious dimension throughout history right up to the present day. The clash today in the Islamic world is happening between the place where Islam originated, that is Saudi Arabia, with the most populous Muslim majority nation in Asia, that is Indonesia. Both are battling it out to define the soul of their faith in the 21st century amidst the fast-changing world order. Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and the head of the Central Board of Indonesia's Nehlatul Ulama, the world's largest Muslim civil society movement, Yahya Cholil Stakuf. They are expressing views which have the Islamic world confused as they differ over whether Islam needs reform or a return to basics, who has the authority to interpret or reinterpret the faith, and what constitutes proper Islamic governance. Today, I'm going to tell you about MBS and his idea of Muslims in Saudi Arabia, which is the cradle of Islam. Since Mohammed bin Salman became Crown Prince in 2017, he has rewritten Saudi history, emphasizing on Saudi nationalism. The country now has a new holiday called the Founding Day. It identifies 1727 as the origin of Saudi Arabia that directly challenges the traditional narrative of 1744 as the foundation year, which commemorated the alliance of the Al Sauds with the radical preacher Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, the founder of Wahhabism. That is, the interpretation of Islam, which is largely seen as reductive. Wahhabism was the state religion and the main force behind Saudi Arabia's authority and Islamic leadership. In one stroke, MBS has tried to distance Saudi Arabia from that interpretation of conservative Islam and ushered in major reforms including emphasis on women rights, gender mixing and public entertainment. At the center of this cultural and socio-religious shift is economics. The realization that Saudi Arabia has to move to a post-energy economy. Ever since Saudi Arabia began exporting oil, it has grown into the largest economy in the Middle East, with a welfare state where benefits include free education, health care, along with subsidized food, electricity and housing. But the economy relies heavily on oil. The country exports almost nothing else and imports almost everything, from food to even water. The welfare state was built on the premise that the price of oil would remain at $100 a barrel. However, the pandemic presented a different picture, where the price of oil dropped to $0 a barrel. Saudi Arabia is now prioritizing domestic concerns over religious and pan-Islamic issues. The focus of the new ruler is to ensure the people of the country generate its wealth. That's why personal freedom is key. Women not only work, but drive and operate more independently now. Tourism and entertainment is now the second largest sector after oil. 
It is being speculated, in fact, that alcohol could be legalized in certain places to promote the industry similar to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. MBS's remake Middle East project has its flip side. The social liberalization and branching of the economy is being accompanied by an equally intense political repression, including the Ritz-Carlton detention of influential and rich Saudis, the 2018 murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul, and the detention and abuse of human rights activists. History has shown the change imposed by monarchs in traditional societies have often unleashed forces the rulers were unable to contain, leading to them being overthrown. Notable examples are the Shah of Iran in 1979 and Hale Selassie in Ethiopia in 1974. These authoritarian and audacious acts of MBS have drawn a lot of attention. So who is MBS and why is he at the center of reforms in the Islamic world? The King of Saudi Arabia is traditionally known as the custodian of the two holy mosques, the sacred sites in Mecca and Medina. In central western Arabia lies the city of Mecca, the birthplace of the Prophet Muhammad. Approximately 200 miles north of Mecca is the second holiest site in Islam, Medina the home of the mosque of Prophet Muhammad. As the site of the Prophet's migration, Medina holds special significance for the Muslim community and continues to attract millions of pilgrims each year, though not an official part of the Hajj pilgrimage. Born in 1985, Muhammad bin Salman is a law graduate from King Saud University who prides himself as a student of Islamic jurisprudence. The son of the current monarch, he was the Minister of Defence, Chairman of the National Economic Committee and second in line to the throne. In Saudi Arabia's long history of rule by ageing kings, MBS is very young. He has shaken the equation of the royal family with radical Islamists and has been uncompromising in foreign policy. He has gone to the extent of describing the Malvis who presided over Iran as Nazis. In order to mobilize the young population of Saudi Arabia, MBS has devised a plan called Vision 2030. Close to 70% of the population of Saudi Arabia is under 30 years. Every year, the government pays for nearly 70,000 students to study in the US. These students return home with a legitimate desire for jobs and freedom that they enjoyed in the West. MBS today has the power which is aided by an ally from outside the kingdom, Muhammad bin Zayed or MBZ, the crown prince of Abu Dhabi, the most politically important of the seven emirates of the UAE.